Hey everyone, today I will be sharing three things with you all. Number one, why would you want to go fossil fuel free in your 401k and IRA? Meaning, why would you want to get rid of oil, coal and gas companies in your portfolio holdings? Number two, will you make more or less money if you do it? And number three, how can you go about creating a fossil fuel free investment portfolio? Hello again, everyone. My name is Alvin Carlos. I'm a personal financial planner and co-founder of District Capital Management here in Washington, D.C. I love the outdoors. I feel strongly about protecting the environment, and this topic is really important to me. So let's dive right into it. First question, why would you want to go fossil fuel free? So I'm a member of the Sierra Club, and I get their monthly newsletters. And in their latest newsletter, the executive director, Michael Broom, talked about how this decade, 2020s, is going to be the last decade where we can avoid a climate catastrophe. And this is one contribution that we will make. If you believe that our planet is worth protecting, if you believe in the urgency, the need to address this climate crisis, then we may want to allow our values to reflect how we spend and invest our money. Second reason of uh, why would you want to make fossil fuel free investments is financial. So for example, if you've successfully avoided oil, gas and coal companies for the past couple of years, then you probably would have been better off financially speaking. So for example, the S&P 500 fossil fuel free ETF actually outperformed the general S&P 500 ETF for the past few years. Now, most of our portfolios, when you look at your 401k IRA brokerage accounts, they are not going to be fossil fuel free. So a more popular US stock market index fund, if you look at it, it actually holds $65 billion in oil, gas, and coal companies. That's close to around 8% of the fund. So why do people hesitate if protecting the environment, addressing the climate crisis is important? For them, why do they hesitate? The main reason probably is individual investors don't really know that it's even possible and they don't know about it. And the other really important reason why people hesitate to do this is for financial reasons, because people believe there's going to be a trade off. So it's a very contentious issue. So, for example, I used to volunteer for the Sierra Club Montgomery County, it's where I live, and 350.org, which is one of the more prominent climate activist advocacy organizations, approached us to Sierra Club because we have a lot of Sierra Club members in the county. They wanted our support for calling for fossil fuel divestment of the Montgomery County Employee Pension Fund. Now, you might think that because we're all Sierra Club members, it was going to be an easy discussion for all of us, but you'll be surprised. It was actually a healthy debate that we conducted because some of the other members believe we didn't have any business messing with employee state pension fund. And the fact that county retirees themselves objected strongly is uh, another thing to consider because the retirees, I mean, their their uh, savings and living is going to be tied into their pension fund. And they want to make sure that the fund managers are maximizing the return. Now, remember that a lot of big oil companies have been financially successful for the past decade. So ExxonMobil, which is one of the largest publicly traded oil companies in the world, has consistently been in the top 10 companies in the S&P 500 ever since that index was created back in 1957. So this leads us to the second question of, will we actually make less money or can we make more money if we go fossil fuel free with our investments? So let me cite a couple of studies. Morgan Stanley, TIA, CREF and Deutsche Bank showed that there is actually no trade-off in the risk or performance with sustainable investing. Another study that was done by Harvard Business School and the University of Oxford 
have shown that companies with higher sustainability scores actually perform better. Now, if we just look at the actual returns for the past 10 years, the S&P energy sector gained a measly 1% for the past decade compared to the broad S&P 500 index, which gained more than 200%. So it looks like there actually might be a financial advantage in going fossil fuel free, but playing, that, playing devil's advocate, you might be wondering, okay, well, oil prices are down now, but maybe they're gonna, ma they're gonna make a comeback and demand is gonna go back up. But remember, a lot of analysis out there, so for example, McKinsey forecasts that peak oil demand is gonna occur in 2030. That's 10 years from now, that's gonna be coming very soon. So you may also wonder, okay, what are the big players actually doing? People handling endowments, pension funds, foundations. What are they doing with the money? Are they putting their money where their mouth is? So many university endowments have actually been ditching fossil fuels, especially given the strong activism done being done by university students. Oxford recently announced that they're gonna ditch fossil fuels in their portfolio. Georgetown has followed suit. Last month, Harvard, which is the largest educational endowment institution in the world, managing around 41 billion in assets, pledged that they're gonna go carbon neutral by 2050 in their endowment. Foundations also have been doing this. Wallace Global Fund was one of the pioneers in divesting their portfolio away from fossil fuels. They did this as early as 2009. Now, almost 200 foundations and private family offices have made the pledge to divest their investment portfolios away from fossil fuels for the next five years. And they collectively manage around 24 billion. And recently, they did a survey of these foundations who made that pledge. And the study showed that these foundations are, are, are sharing the fact that they either had a neutral or a positive impact on their returns. So what this study is saying is there actually might not be a trade-off in aligning our values with our money. And maybe in some cases, we actually might make more money if we go fossil fuel free. No wonder today, more than 1,000 institutions manning 11 trillion in combined assets from sovereign wealth funds, asset managers, insurance companies, pension funds are divesting from fossil fuels for ethical and financial reasons. So last point I wanted to make is, as an individual investor, can we go fossil fuel free? And if so, how do we go about doing that? Well, the first thing you may wanna do is actually do some detective work and find out how much exposure do you actually have in fossil fuels. So go to fossilfreefunds.org. So that's fossilfreefunds.org. Type in the name of one of the funds in your 401k or the ticker symbol, and it's gonna show you how much oil, gas, and oil companies that particular fund that you own contains. The more popular sustainable funds are Parnassus, Pax, and Calvert. They're the ones who have been early in the field of sustainable investing. So you can also check them out. Keep in mind though that they will probably charge higher fees. More recently, the mainstream financial institutions have produced a lower cost ETF that would either do sustainable investing or fossil fuel free investing. So you might find them in Vanguard or Fidelity or State Street. Active, actively managed growth or value funds might also, if you do some research, contain very minimal exposure to oil and gas companies given the current environment. Now in your 401k, it might be slightly more difficult to implement this strategy of fossil fuel investment because you're going to be limited by the investment options that are chosen by your company. So if you feel strongly about this, you might want to talk to your HR or your company CFO and 
tell them why you should do it and there might be some financial reasons for doing it. Especially if you work for a social justice or environmental organization. Now, if you have some savings in your IRA or brokerage accounts, then it's going to be much easier to implement this because we can buy an ETF or mutual fund out there that we think is the best in terms of implementing a fossil fuel free investment strategy. So there you have it, my friends. If you have any questions on how to go about implementing this strategy of fossil fuel free divestment, feel free to reach out to us. Our website is districtcapitalmanagement.com. We'll be happy to help out. Until next time.